I'm going to call it like it is. As someone who's done kendo before, someone who's actually learned chakso how to tie stuff like that, whenever I see images online, I have a tendency to look at things and deem them as goofy right off the bat. I, I seem to always throw things more in the goofy zone than in the tadashi okay zone. You know, the goofy zone seems to be maybe 80 or maybe 90% of the images of kendo I see online, whereas the goofy zone is a fairly small amount of images of kendo I've seen online, which usually is uh, is produced from people who, who understand it. When I look at these images, I just, I feel this, this, this twinge of pain for whatever reason, even though the majority of the image are, images are that way. So I want to show you my favorite, one of my favorite images that I've seen online. And it's actually just a Google images search that I've done on Kendo. And I want to tell you, because this is a little bit more nuanced, I think, than most of the images out there. A lot of images are blatantly wrong. Like the men himal is orange and the men is actually on upside down. And for whatever reason, the lady's naked underneath it. It's really weird. I don't know why that is. Um, she, is. I'm really glad that the doll covers up a little bit so I don't have to you know, feel bad about looking at the image um, with uh, with my coworkers peering on from behind me. But um, I want to show you this one image because it's it's I think it's one of the top tier images because when I first look at it, I think like oh it's okay, and then I start to look at it more and more, and I realize after every pixel I look over, uh, the more the more the goofy level the the goofy needle is actually turning uh, more and more toward the goofy side, and it's about to say boil that kind of a thing. So I, I just want, I want to look over this and I want to see if um, if anyone else um, sees the same thing because I might be 100% crazy. This might be a schizophrenic episode I'm having looking at this image. So let's start off here with the uh, with the men. Um, I really like the shape of the men here. I'm really into shaping men the proper way. And of course, the proper way to shape men is to make it look like Fujisan. And you can see how it has that Mount Fuji shape. Instead of tying up here really tight on the lower end and having the himo um, tie back here underneath the monomi or the area where you look at it. You can see how his eyes are correctly on the monomi. Um, not here. This isn't the real monomi. This is actually the real monomi. And one eyeball should be peering right above that. Um, you can tell that it's shaped just perfectly, which is just amazing, wonderful, and I really think it's great. Um, but, you know, really the best thing is that it's such a well-shaped man that you actually don't need to tie it properly whatsoever. What he's done is he's actually tied this um, off to the side underneath, and there's actually a little loop um, underneath the buttock area down here. See, this is the real, the, the actual traditional way men was tied um, back in, um, I think it was the Muromachi Jidai, um, back when you'll know, you see old pictures and they're actually done just like this. So it's actually a very good component of this image and I really love that. I really like how they portray that in a really nice way. But what really, uh, what really um, overshadows that, an even better component about this, that ski. You'll notice that in order for ski to be completely protected and actually protect your throat, you notice a lot of people get skied in the throat and stuff like that, it should be underneath the dolmen. Um, if the, the ski, the datotsubuya, is actually underneath the dolmen, it actually covers the datotsubuya a little bit. Um, so it's harder for you to actually ski that with the kensaki. Um, it's underneath here. So, you know, not only is a point scoring plus, it's also a much more protective way to go. It's uh, something that I do myself all the time. I always make sure to jut my tsuki under uh, tsuki dada underneath there. It also makes it so my head doesn't pop up when I strike. The tsuki dada is really, it's covered, it's in place. It's basically a cast holding my head um, from popping up that way. And, and I love it. It's really something that I feel like I always strive towards. So that's actually a really good um, component of this picture. I, I don't know why, I can only find good components right now. Um, I've also noticed that the way this dole is tied is really perfect. Uh, this is called a monkey fist, um, and it's typically not used for when you want to tie something and throw it over. So you tie it in a monkey's fist. Basically, you just jam it up into a ball that only Occam's razor can cut, and you throw it over a wire, that kind of thing. I think it's really well done um, the way it is right up front. It's up uh, right in front of the Mayobi of the Tare, which is actually the traditional place you're supposed to put it. This was developed mostly in the 1970s, um, post-World War II era. Kendo, um, they decided to do this. Today, it's it's just been gone. It's mostly, um, you know, it's just a lack of uh, people trusting the tradition of Kendo in order to tie it properly this way. So I think that itself is actually a really a really good thing. One thing I just think is really goofy about this is uh, the dole. Um, dole dai shouldn't be shaped like this. It should actually be um, extremely long. It should actually be all the way up here to the armpit. You'll see a lot of drawings online where they come all the way up to the armpit. That's actually the correct way dole dai should be. This is um, cut down into the smaller shape, um, kind of illegally. It's in order to make the datotsubi a little bit smaller, so it's harder to score yuko datotsu. Um, it's, it's really a very shady technique that I only see some people do, and I really don't like it, honestly. When it comes to the tare, um, what I really love about this is that it's not shaped right here. It's not um, flared out and facing toward me at all. Everyone knows that tare um, should never actually face a person. It should face away from a person and open up. Um, like here, you can tell how it opens up the collarbone. That's actually how tare should be. It shouldn't be flattened 
uh, blocking the collarbone um, like this, like the, the way I tie in my videos, I am actually really bad at it. So I actually tie it this way to cover up um, the soft spots in my body. It should actually be splayed open and open for everyone to see. The more open it is, it shows you have STEMI and you can just throw yourself forward and that you don't care about what your enemy does, whether or not he's going to poke you up here. It really shows that you care a lot about your kendo when you splay it up this way as if you're someone at a, a certain kind of a festival where they take t-shirts and go like this for some reason. You know, what I really love about this image, I think the uh, probably the greatest part about this image is the fact that he is wielding not shinai, not bokuto, but actual shinken. And everyone knows that, um, you know, people in Bogu, uh, you know, they use shinai, but that's really, it's really for wimps and losers and um, soy boys, honestly. It's a very beta move to, to use an actual shinken. Um, the, or uh, sorry, I should say shinai. It's a very beta move to use shinai. This is actually absolute chad level. You see, the more chad level you are, the more dangerous the weapons you are. Um, it, I, I practice a, a, a thousand martial arts, actually. Um, kendo, I practice um, other ones, mostly martial arts in my backyard where I, where I poke my friend in the face with a, with a stick that I found. Um, but of, of all those ancient koryu that I learned in my backyard, um, the best koryu is to wear bogu and then use shinken. You see, shinken is very flat. And you've, you've heard that thing before that with uh, shinken, it was so flat that when you hold to them, no kamai, it's so to them, and you'd face a person, they wouldn't be able to see the blade. Um, but the thing is that Mengane, as you can see, how he's looking through the actual monomi or the, the place you're supposed to look out of, um, which actually should be here, is, is one eyeball should be looking out of this um, higher monomi. This is the wrong monomi. This is the good monomi. Um, the Kensaki of this blade can actually turn sideways and go through the monomi. So it's, it's a lot more alpha because it, it's basically showing people on the social hierarchy that you have so much uh, masculine strength and energy that you can turn the blade sideways and go into the eye of your opponent on accident. Um, a lot of people have heard that um, that kind of a myth in kendo that there once was a sensei um, who uh, who put on benge onto his back and went to sleep. Um, it's kind of a limerick, but um, but actually, you see that sensei. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but a shinai splinter, uh, part of the, this, one of the staves of the shinai actually jut out and went inside of his eye. So that's one reason why people today like to keep their shinai a lot more in check, want to make sure that the sakigawa or the leather tip is in place so that the, um, you know, the little leather, the little uh, bamboo pieces can shoot out into the eyeball. But in this case, this is an extreme alpha move to actually use shinken and that's one of my favorite parts about this. This is definitely not Iaito. This is definitely a cold steel shinken that was found on Tiger Claw Supply Martial Arts USA um, Freedom. Um, very, very high quality. Probably cost at least $150 USD. Very large amount of money to invest in a shinken. But um, if I were you, I would definitely try to do this instead of using shinai. This is a much better, much more alpha move to do. You don't want to be seen as a whimpering soy boy in kendo. You gotta be a chad, and you gotta be a real, real chad. And look at, finally, this is this is really my, my favorite part. This position he's in, this is what you would call um, take a knee sonkyo. Uh, sonkyo has many different variations. There's a, a left sonkyo, right sonkyo, up sonkyo, down sonkyo, A, B, um, X, Y, R1, and R2 Sonkyo. But this Sonkyo is one that most people don't know. It's called Take a Knee Sonkyo, developed in Ohio um, in, I think this is something like 2013 or something like that. Ohio boys represent that kind of thing. But this uh, Sonkyo is one of my favorite. It's the kind where you take a knee um, and you don't really know where the back foot is necessarily, but it just shows you, coach, I'm willing to do what's necessary to get a touchdown, score a couple of um, of bonus downs in the inning and make sure that that pigskin flies far south for the winter, that kind of thing. One of my favorite parts of this image. So um, I don't know if you guys have the same opinion as me. Um, I, I honestly do really like this image a lot more than before. I was going to give it like a 5 out of 10, but after sitting here and doing some some research on it, you know, making sure that all the different components um, of the bulgu were in check and especially the way he's, he's sitting. It's just, it's just such an alpha move. I don't even know what to do. I'm really a I'm really amazed at it. Um, you know, I feel like I'm going to give it more of an 8 out of 10. So, um, you know, if you like this video, if you like this uh, this very in-depth analysis I've done, make sure to give it a comment, um, drop a like, and um, if you're in the YouTube system, make sure to tell a, a Susan Wojcicki that it's a great, great video, and it should definitely go a lot higher 
um, in the recommendations, even though it's shot in this um, unusually squashed um, old style uh, format. So um, that's it. See you next